Hey guys, Paul Tower here, back with another video. So today's date is Monday, July 1st. Uh, so today's video is going to be President Trump versus Gavin Newsom. So the scenario is going to be Biden stays in the race until the Democratic National Convention, which is on August 19th to 22nd, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, that's where Gavin Newsom gets swapped in. So he has the rest of August, about a week, two full months, September and October. And then he has the first four, five days in November to campaign. But yeah, if... This swap does happen, which I do think is, at this point, highly unlikely. The Biden campaign has been saying they're going to stay in the race. Don't think it's going to happen, but I guess it's just going to be the hypothetical in case it does, as of right now. But yeah, if this does happen, I do think it would create a lot of instability in the Democratic Party in terms of voters. Because at one point, I do think a lot of people would get the sense that they cast their vote for Joe Biden in the primary, and then... Now they're getting Gavin Newsom, who no one voted for in the primary, but he's just the nominee. So pretty much the yeah. Don't know how good of a look that'll be. But I do I do expect CNN, MSNBC just run with it, which I guess most people do watch that. So probably wouldn't make too much of an impact. But yeah, let's let's get started and fill out the map. So for those of you who don't know, Gavin Newsom is the governor of California. He is like a somewhat more progressive version of Biden. Biden's like a centrist corporate Democrat. Gavin Newsom's more so of a progressive, but at the same time, he's still like a corporate Democrat. But yeah. So with this started, I'm just going to fill in Texas. For Texas, I don't think Newsom's going to perform well here at all, especially with the oil industry and then his environmental policies. Don't think that's going to happen. Uh, same with Ohio and Iowa. I do think that these... Oh, do not mean to put Illinois there. But yeah. I do think Ohio and Iowa, at least for this election cycle, are just lost causes for the Democratic Party. In general, no matter who they run, even if they were to swap out a uh, Democrat from Iowa or Ohio, I don't think those states would go. But yeah. So as of right now, it's 189. Oh yeah, forgot about Florida. I, I think we can all agree Florida's going to Trump. Uh, but I do think it'll be... I think it'll be lean, honestly. Sorry, likely. But yeah, it's 219 to 184. So now let's start filling off the states that are probably going to be going to Gavin Newsom. Uh, Colorado is a state where I do think he'd perform pretty well. Colorado's been trending liberal, I guess, over the past couple election cycles. Gavin Newsom, his environmental policies, I, I think they would fare well in Colorado. Uh, New Mexico, I'm not sure. New Mexico, Trump has been having like a huge surge in terms of the Hispanic vote but at the same time it is New Mexico it is kind of a blue state not sure how much that would do I do think that like outside of Albuquerque and such and such Newsom wouldn't perform as well I do think that he would still carry the state I'm not sure if I should put it between likely or I'm just gonna leave it as likely honestly five points Newsom carries uh yeah so 199 to 219 so, where can we go over? Let's start off with Georgia and North Carolina. These two states, I don't think are going to be Newsom states. Georgia, I honestly just think it's a lost cause for the Democrats as of right now. Uh, Trump's been gaining the black vote. I don't think Newsom would change too much of that. Like, I, like if they're dissat I think they're dissatisfied with the Democratic Party as a whole right now. Like, you could swap in Newsom, but I don't think he's going to carry the black vote. Like, unless they somehow swap in Obama, I don't think it would make too much of a difference here. So, Newsom would not fare well in AT or He would obviously win ATL, but I don't think he'd have the turnout that Joe Biden had in 2020. Uh, so, given that, I do think Georgia would probably be going in a lean margin to President Trump. Uh, same with North Carolina. I'm from here. Everyone I know... Uh, Throughout the state I've traveled to, they're hard pro-Trump. Now, that might just be the people I'm hanging around with. But even then, polling kind of backs me up here. do think Newsom wouldn't fare too well here. So, yeah. So, right now, we're at 251 to uh, 199. Uh, let's start off with Virginia here. Virginia is a state where I don't see President Trump faring too well against if it was Newsom. Because Newsom, I do think he would drive turnout in uh, Nova, a.k.a. Northern Virginia. Especially with all the government and... Um, tech workers there, President Trump I don't think would have his message wouldn't really resonate with them like Newsom's would uh, especially since Newsom is more so, like I guess he's more of a politician than Trump is because Newsom's not too much of an outsider, so like I said 
the DC suburbs. I think they would just be going heavily towards Newsom. I think it would be more so of a, like a likely manner. Uh, and I think that's pretty interesting because in my last video, I did a video about, uh, go check it out if you haven't watched it already, but it's pretty much the debate, but if the election was held right after. And with that being said, I gave Minnesota and Virginia both to President Trump, but that's Biden right after the debate. And there's going to be huge discontent with that. And that's like pretty, pretty much no recovery time for him. And with that case scenario, I gave Virginia tilting to President Trump. Don't think that would happen with this if Newsom's on the ballot there. Uh, going over to... Honestly, let's just go over to the West Coast here. Uh, Nevada is a state where I don't see Newsom faring too well here. There's a lot of people moving from California to Nevada because they don't really agree with Newsom. Like I said, I think Trump is going to hammer the fact, especially in the debate. Let's say the ABC September 9th or whatever date what the debate was is against Newsom versus Trump. I do think Trump is going to hammer in the fact that he's going to turn California, sorry, he's going to turn America into California. That's what Trump's going to be talking about. But at the same time, Newsom honestly is a good debater. Uh, whether you like it or not to say. Uh, I don't really agree too much with Newsom, but at the same time, this guy did go on Fox News, and then I do think he walked into the line stand against DeSantis, with Sean Hannity monitoring it. And Newsom held his ground. He did pretty good, honestly. He did way better than I expected. Like, I thought Newsom was going to get trounced. Because Fox, cause it's on Fox News, moderated by Sean Hannity, and then against DeSantis. I thought DeSantis, like, uh, yeah. DeSantis on paper is more so of a good candidate in person and in debates. I think he's just too awkward. But yeah, Nevada, that doesn't matter right now. But Nevada, this is a state where I don't think Newsom would fare too well. Yeah, you can say, oh yeah, well, Cal or, sorry, California is next to Nevada. Don't think that would help here at all. Uh, Trump would win that. 257 to 212 as of right now. Now going over to Arizona. This is a state where I think Newsom would get hammered in terms of the immigration stance. Trump would accuse him of, I guess, exacerbating the border crisis, but in California. Uh, and he'd pretty much just say he would turn America, all four border states, into California. But this is what Trump's argument would be. Especially in Arizona, I don't think uh, Newsom's position on immigration would fare too well here either uh the only hope i have for newsom in terms of arizona would be abortion like during the debate biden okay the democrats abortion is a winning issue for them and biden could not articulate that newsom could because newsom can actually talk don't think because <sighs> at the same time the democrats would just be running countless as their but at this point, I think Arizona is also a lost cause, kind of like Georgia. It's like a Sun Belt state that's kind of having buyers and more so President Biden. And Trump would just tie them as, oh, well, this is just the Democrats as a whole right now. So th that being said, I do think Arizona would probably be going to Trump probably two to three points. I don't think it'd be like a five point six point blowout like the polls are saying against Biden. But yeah, right now it's 260 to 212. Now let's go over to Minnesota. Minnesota is a state, I think it is more progressive out of all the rust, but I think we can all agree. This is the only state that went blue in the 1972 election. This is a state where Newsom would probably do well. He would drive turnout in Minneapolis. Uh, don't think... Oh, the only reason I gave this state to Trump was because Biden and him are tied in the polls, but if Biden's not on the ballot, I can see Minnesota going to Newsom because I don't think as many people would vote third party if it was Biden's... Like, sorry, if it was Newsom on the ballot. So with that being said, I do think Newsom would probably carry the state, probably lean or likely margin, probably three or four points. Actually, probably not likely. Yeah. 222 to 268. Trump honestly just needs anything and he'll win. But let's go over to New Hampshire. This is another state where I think Trump would just get decimated in against Newsom. Not decimated, but like it'd be by a couple points. Uh, like I said, Trump, in my opinion, he did underperform in the primary there. Uh, you can make the case liberals voting for Nikki Haley. I do think Trump's not going to perform too well in New Hampshire. To see, uh, yeah, this is a state where I think the independents would just swing for Newsom. That being said, Newsom would probably carry it, probably in a lean margin. I don't know why I keep doing that. Yeah, lean. 226 to 268 as of right now. So now going over to Philadelphia, or sorry, Pennsylvania, my bad. Pennsylvania is a state where, sure, Newsom would probably win Philly. Trump would carry the real part. Now, I'm not too sure how a guy from California, more so progressive, 
would fare well here in Pennsylvania. I don't think it would turn out too well, especially with Trump and the whole America First uh, policy that he's pushing. I can see the state just going for Trump. Obviously not a blowout. I do think it'd probably be pretty close. It'd still be pretty close because Newsom would probably do well in Philly. But yeah, 287 to 226 does right now. Trump's re-elected president. But let's go over. Michigan is a state where, especially with Newsom and the environment, I think the locals would have concerns that his green poli- his like green energy policies wouldn't really mix well with the auto industry. And as if it, it is kind of dying right now, don't think it would perform too well here. <sighs> Yeah, I don't. I don't think it would. Yeah, I don't think Newsom's the type of guy who would do well in the Rust Belt. Against, unless it's against someone like DeSantis or like a weaker, like more so like corporate Democrat or sorry corporate Republican. If it was Ted Cruz, he'd probably sweep the Rust Belt. If it was Newsom versus Ted Cruz, Newsom would probably carry the Rust Belt. But I don't think Ted like. Yeah, I don't against a like, Trump guy like Trump style Republican like MAGA. Don't think he would. Fair too well here. So I'll just give Michigan tilting margin. 302 to 226 as of right now. And then at this point, Wisconsin. Yeah, I don't think he would carry Wisconsin either. Like, it's just the whole Rust Belt thing. Out of the three states, if Newsom has the chance to carry, it would probably be Wisconsin. I could, like, I wouldn't be surprised if Newsom, like, if this were to happen. 236, like, 302. I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Maybe even Michigan. I, I just... Uh, no, I don't think Michigan would go. But I still think at this point, if Trump's carrying Pennsylvania and Michigan, probably you got to win in Wisconsin as well. But yeah, this is my map. 3 to two, uh, 226 against Gavin Newsom versus President Trump. This is also like the scenario where Newsom only has two months to campaign. So that's another thing. The Democratic Party would still be pretty fractured. But yeah, 226 to 312. Maybe if Newsom was running from the get-go, you'd probably have a... I think the map would look more blue. But with only two months, I don't. Yeah, and also he, he kind of does have a lot of baggage here. So I know Trump has a lot of baggage to attack, but I think I don't know. I think Trump's pretty good at deflecting. But yeah, this is this is my map: three twelve to two twenty six. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree in the comments down below. Also, thank you guys for all the support and comments and likes for the past couple of videos. I did not expect them to get that many views. And yeah, uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Keeps me going. But yeah. 312-226, let me know if you guys agree or disagree down in the comments below, and peace out.